Alrighty, I'm really excited to share this with you. This is a new technique that you can do with SDXL that allows you to take two completely different images and combine them together into a third image. Now, this is not a Photoshop type of merge, but a concept type of merge, or the souls of both images, if you will, into a new third image. Uh, and Comfy, Emily, and I uh, covered this during the Discord live stream yesterday at Stability.ai's Discord. And I could put a link down there uh, in the description in case you want to hang out there. Every week we do live streams, and Comfy was on the show with us and walked us through how to do this. So I wanted to share this with you. Uh, so we're going to set this up. And again, once this is done, you can just have it by dragging any of the images you create here into your workspace, and it'll load it right up. I'd also like to thank all the people who are supporting this channel, and I will put the image we create here into the posts for the channel uh, for the sponsor level and higher, you can then grab this image and download into Comfy and have the graph ready to go. Thanks again for everybody supporting the channel. Uh, so let's start by loading in a checkpoint and we're gonna use the base SDXL model here. Uh, remember that you have to use the SDXL model or you're gonna need a special unclip model. Uh, now in this case, SDXL has the capability to function as an unclip model, unlike 1.5 or 2.0. Uh, so just realize that this is a special situation here. Normally you would require a special model for this. So change this to your SDXL model. And once you have that in place, we're also going to load in a cl clip model. And I will put a link down below uh, to the model we're gonna be loading. So go to models, uh, loaders again, and we're gonna load in a clip vision model here. And you'll simply dump the file into the clip vision folder inside of the model folder. So it'll be models, clip vision, and then whatever it is here. Uh, so I have two in here. One's a big one, one's a small one. Uh, I'll put the link to the ones that are the uh, official releases down below so you can grab it again. It's uh, something you're gonna use from time to time. Now the clip model is uh, interesting. What it's going to do is take and classify, generically classify what it sees in the image. And it's a pretty darn good at most things. It's not very good at say specific car brands or flower species. It's not very good at things that may be close to one another. And it's only about 88% or so accurate with handwriting, but everything else in the image, it should be able to at least identify and kind of put into this. So what we're going to kind of use is the image as a prompt instead of the prompt as a prompt. As so. so what we're going to do here is we're going to drag out our clip and we're going to start here, uh, just like we would normally with our clip text in code. This is where you would put the prompt of the image you're creating. Now, in this case, we're going to leave this blank. In fact, we want to make sure this is blank. And the way we can do that is we can do, we can drag this out and do search and we can search for zero. And you see there's a conditioning zero out. This takes anything that might be in here from padding or zeros or what, whatever happens to be in here and makes it basically null. It's uh, not going to be anything. And we're going to do this for both the positive and the negative. So if you uh, control C and then if you hold down a shift key when you paste, you'll get both of them uh, still connected, uh, which is nice for saving time. But again, we're not really going to do much uh, here as far as prompting goes, at least not initially. We might uh, come back to this. Okay, so now let's go down and let's load in two different images. So I'm going to use image. And then here we'll go to load image and uh, go ahead and pick one. Uh, I'm gonna use one mermaid here and I'll pick another one. And I'll use some uh, flowers here for this one. Again, it doesn't matter where these images come from. They don't have to be AI generated. They could be photos or, or from your journey or wherever you wanna get them. Uh, just go ahead and load them in here. Again, the size of them isn't gonna matter either uh, because the clip model is basically going to look at what is in the image and use that as the prompt. Uh, so to do that, we need to encode it with this model. So if we drag this out here, you'll see the only option is really the encoding here. Uh, so when in doubt, you can just drag out the node and it should give you some good hints as to what you can do with it. Uh, and we're gonna need this same node bound down below here. Uh, so we'll grab this image here and we'll, gra and we'll grab the same encoder here. Now we have that. What we wanna do is be able to adjust the strength of both of these prompts as the conditioning output here. So if we drag this out, you'll see that there's an unclip conditioning. Uh, so this is basically going to take and allow us to adjust how strong this clip in encoding is. Now there's also a noise augmentation down below here. And that is kind of like a variability. Now in this case, because it's gonna be variable enough, looking at the image and guessing what it is, I don't think that we're really gonna be using this at all. Uh, but if you wanted a lot more variability, almost like it's departing from the image you uploaded, then yeah, you could use noise augmentation. Uh, in this case, I don't think that makes any sense. We're going to skip that. Okay, we're just going to duplicate this and we're going to use it here as well. So this one's going to go here into this. And this one is just chaining, this condition is going to be chaining here into this one. Now the order doesn't matter because uh, they're being combined, but just realize that you're going to have to chain them together. And we're not going to do this with the negative side. We're only going to do this with the positive side. So to that end, we're going to connect the positive here down to this one. 
this is kind of what it should look like. Again, the, the flow is this zero conditioning here. Um, so we're making sure that this prompt doesn't add any noise more or less to what we're doing down here. Now, if we do add a prompt to it, then that's going to help guide it. So if there's a certain aspect of this that you want to see out of it, then you would continue uh, the same thing, but you would go ahead and add a prompt here to help guide this conditioning. But remember that this is going to zero it out. So if you do put a prompt, uh, you're going to have to take this directly into the conditioning here. You're going to have to get rid of this node. Now, otherwise, that, that's going to get rid of all your work. And you'll be like, why is my prompt not working? Well, basically because I zeroed it out. Uh, so uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to take this right into our case sampler, right? Just like we would normally. So here's our case sampler. So we have our positive and our negative is just going to come straight from over there. We are not doing any sort of clip conditioning or, or any sort of encoding with the negative side at all. And we're going to grab our model and drag that over. And we're going to need our VAE eventually as well. Uh, in order to make this neat too, um, I think I've showed this before, but if you let go, you have a reroute is an option. And reroute allows you to kind of have this so you don't have to have lines stringing through everything. Um, I don't use this very often, uh, but uh, I use another thing called a pipe. And we're going to actually cover that in a, in a future episode here. Let's just do a little bit of uh, OCD there and we'll fix that up. Okay, now from here, we obviously need our standard empty latent. So we just drag that down and grab an empty latent. And uh, this is a uh, SDXL model. So 1024 is optimal here, at least to start. I like to have at least one dimension be 1024 or longer. And then we can go and we can decode this using the VAE. And then we'll have our save image. And that should do it. Should be able to take these two images here and combine them in spirit and then produce an image over here. I made my graph kind of wide here, but it's simple. Um, or, you know, you can cram it all together, but I think it's pretty simple this way. Let's see what it looks like. Now we are going to change our case sampler here, but let's run an initial one so you can see what it looks like. And the result's okay. But I think we can do better by adjusting some of the sampling here. So. Uh, let's dig into this. What I would like to do is more steps. Uh, now, more steps means more detail to a point, and then you're uh, diminishing returns. So 30, 35 is probably plenty in here. Um, I like my CFG. Six and a half to eight is fine, uh, so we'll leave that in there. Uh, for the sampler, though, instead of Euler, I'm going to use uh, one down here, the 3M SDE GPU. So this is the DPM++ standard differential equation, one made for a GPU. And for the scheduler, we're probably going to use like exponential just to kind of mix it up a bit. Let's try this again. And what you can do uh, if you are not OCD is we can bring the pieces of this that are meaningful uh, together so that we can kind of control everything. So this is the controls for the bottom image. This is the controls for the top image. And if we want less of the top image or more of the bottom image, then we would control these by adjusting the strength here. That's a little bit more in the spirit of what we were doing. Uh, in fact, we could drag these over here as well. This hanging around. And I know it's a bit uh, ugly from a UI perspective, but I think Comfy said it best is that he didn't design this to be a front end. He designed the back end and then threw a front end on it. So uh, if it's not the UI masterpiece that you want it to be, realize that's not its intention. Its intention is to be a back end with just a UI tossed on top. So let's change these a little bit. Let's put, uh, let's leave her at say 0.9. And we'll put the background at 0.7 uh, just for giggles and run with that. There we go. I get the idea, uh, the concept here. Now, if we want to, we could go and I'll put a prompt in here. So what we can do is expand this. By clicking on the gray dot there. And now we have to get rid of this zero here if we're going to use a prompt. So this will, if you just hit delete key, now we're connected directly. Now we can guide it in my mind we are kind of interjecting a third variable into here. It's the kind of the way I look at it. We have our conditioning from both of these images plus the conditioning from whatever this is. So it's a almost equal thirds type of situation if we left them all at the same weight. Okay, here's Cyborg Mermaid. Uh, if we add that as a prompt. Uh, let's try another one. Steampunk Flower Girl. There we go. So it's using a bit of both images. In this case, obviously, we're getting some flowers from here and we're getting a little bit of the woman here. And the tones is kind of a value uh, combination of the two. Uh, very interesting. Uh, I really think this is a neat concept and uh, one that I'll explore more. And obviously you can link as many of these images together as your computer can handle. Uh, so that might be also a fun bit of adventure. But adjusting the weights, playing with the weights here, uh, a very interesting combination of technologies uh, that SDXL is offering to us. 
Uh, so let me know what you think in the comments. Try it out and see if you can create some really amazing things. Everybody take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you all next time.